Hello and welcome to the City Newsroom on City TV. My name is Freeme Dunyame. And I am Michael Obudu. Coming up... Youth from Odona vandalized at Abraka police station over the death of one of their colleagues, leaving three police officers wounded. COVID-19 pandemic pushes prices of some foodstuffs in markets down. Oh, before Corona, a big size of Pona can give you maybe 15 CDs, 10 CDs or somewhere. But this time, you can't get it like that. It is rotten. Also coming up, low patronage hits malls, pushing sales of goods and services down. When I compare before and after us, this time is very bad. There is a huge difference in markets. They don't patronize nowadays at all. And stigmatization hindering efforts by health workers in the Ashanti region in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. People who go through the protocol and then are discharged, when they go home, they are usually faced with challenges. Even when we are looking for isolation center, we are, we are being challenged. Now in our first story, some youth of Adona in Adabraka who were disgruntled over the death of a colleague of theirs on Wednesday evening vandalized the Adabraka police station. The group numbering about 100 besieged the police station with the dead body of their colleague chanting war songs and wielding dangerous weapons. This is the Adabraka police station. Just some few um, hours ago, some gentlemen or boys from the Adabraka Sahara area um, stormed this particular police station and deposited a dead body at the reception. Well, the issue is um, the police went into the community to conduct a swoop, and uh, as a result, two of the individuals were scared, were trying to run cross um, the Odona River. One of them fell into the Odona River and died. So the boys went ahead to bring the body directly to the Adabraka police station. This triggered the Adabraka police station officials to also go back into the community to fish out which individuals did this. Well, when they came here, they pelted stones at some of the officers vandalizing some of their vehicles. Not only the vehicles, but they caused fear and panic among the residents in this particular vicinity. So the police went back into the community to ensure that there is law and order. So if you see the police officers masked up here, this is a way to bring sanity into the community. The boys, we understand, are at large. They are running for their lives. They are scared. But the police has made it a point that at all costs, they will go ahead and arrest these individuals who committed this illegal act at the Adabraka police station. So this is the situation right now. Um, the individual has been put into the body bag. Um, the boy who some of the boys from Adabraka Sahara came to dump at the reception of the Adabraka police station. So the police is ensuring that the body is taken to the right place where it belongs. They'll put it into the bucket of the uh, pickup and uh, take it to uh, a place where it will be dumped, so to say, because that body doesn't belong here. Okay, so information I'm gathering here is that the body will be sent or uh, deposited at the police morgue just this evening. But the assemblyman for the area is here. We're going to ask him what exactly he witnessed and what he can tell us about the situation. Sir, you're welcome to City News Show. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, uh, well, can you tell us what the issue is um, um, into details as of this evening? 
Um, around 5.41, I had a call that uh, one of our guys fell into the uh, odor drain and he couldn't uh, swim back. So the guys were looking for him. So, uh, but there were police who came to make arrest, and he fell. He ran and fell into the uh, the drain. So I came here first to check whether any of our policemen has gone there. When I came, I saw I saw two policemen here who were who were uh, one has been beaten and he has he had the blood on the mat and stuff. Then. Uh, after that, I told the police that I want to go back and see whether it is true that the person has, is in the water. So I went there and yes, uh, they were looking for him in the water. But they went far. So I went to control and made, uh, told them they should come to where he fell because he might not, uh, the water, the, the volume of the water and the speed of the water would not, wouldn't have taken them to that place. So uh, uh, after some time, we came back and we we, we identified him at the, that place. After some time, we, we moved him and we brought him back. I was telling them, they should, I called the police that they should bring me body back. I, I, I was going to call the ambulance to come so that we take the body to them. Then we called, I called somebody to go and call me his uncle so that we come and, uh, and, and come and make a case. When the guys got to my side, I was trying to stop them. They were no, they said they won't stop. They are bringing the body to the police because it's the policeman who pushed him to the water. So, so we understand two police officers um, are hurt in this particular um, 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 incident. But what exactly do you understand or have you gathered so far uh, concerning the soup? What did the police go there to really do? What was the information they picked up as the assembly member? Yeah, um, as, for, as for our police, I, I'm even surprised uh, we have had such a news because we relate to the police very well. We relate to them very well. So I was shocked that uh, they said policemen went there to make a uh, uh, arrest because I learned even three days today there was a, uh, there was a uh, misunderstanding between some of them and they came here. So I don't know the actual uh, arrest that they went to do, but I learned they went there to do arrest and this happened. What is your name, sir? Uh, Hendrik Nobokina. And you are? Uh, the assemblyman for Don Asara. Okay, so that is the situation here. Um, Honorable Henry Nobokina, who is the assembly member for Odona Electoral Area, has told us what the situation is. We will bring you more on this information as and when. From the Adabraka Police Command, my name is Philipni Latte. Now, away from that, with the outbreak of the coronavirus, one of the major challenges in mitigating the spread has been the unavailability of adequate personal protective equipment for frontline health workers. Now, in some cases, some health professionals have bemoaned the delay in its distribution to health centers. In a bid to address this menace, government has announced again the distribution of 1.2 million PPE to health facilities for effective discharge of their duties. There is more in the following report by City News' Ni Ayikwen Okain. The Minister of Health, Kwekwajiman Menu, engaged some health workers of the Greater Accra Regional Hospital who are at the forefront of the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. During the course of the interaction, the Minister announced that government distributed 1.2 million PPE to hospitals, including mental health facilities, to aid in the discharge of their work. I can now say with all confidence that we have enough. There are five companies that are suing um, face masks. The N95, we have one company that is suing about 600,000. We have placed another for 3 million face masks, the ordinary ones that we can use anywhere. Headgears and gowns and scrubs and coveralls. We are doing large numbers. As of yesterday, we had close to about 1.2 million stocks that we distributed in the morning. We have formed a commodities committee for COVID 
in the ministry. And we are using the traditional Ghana Health Service supply chain that has been improved to the extent that we do last mile distribution. He added that in cases where there is an urgent call for PPE by facilities, there would be no need for the use of distribution channels. We have superimposed direct ministry to facility distribution for areas that will call us that we have sat here for that long we don't have a single face mask when we get those type of calls we don't go through the channel we move straight to either the region or the district for things to be distributed government says the yet to be constructed 88 district hospitals will include mental health facilities one of the treatment centers that we are building is price situated in Pantan. Okay, we have created a holding room and a treatment place in Pantan at the moment because we got one case of a mental patient and that is where we are keeping that person. So if we get cases through the... And we have said that we have to create some specialty, I mean, services in some of the hospitals said like that across the country we can get specialists closer to the people. Meanwhile, Medical Director of the Greater Accra Regional Hospital, Dr. Emmanuel Shofenyo said, government is also procuring cartridges for gene expert machines at some health centers in the country for quick results after testing of suspected cases of COVID-19 is conducted. Cartridges are being procured so that the gene expert machines that we have all over this country, about 110 of them, including the Greater Accra Regional Hospital, we also have a gene expert machine. So when the cartridges come into country, it will help to reduce. It will mean that we can provide our own tests and get the results in good time. The coronavirus... Exception. Locally, though, the virus is hitting hard at some sectors of the economy than others. And so on this edition of the City Newsroom, we're going into the markets to establish how the pandemic has affected prices as well as availability of food produce. My name is Nana Tufu and this is the City Newsroom. Ebrone Buono, answer na yari e yibay, na mo ton the same, na mo so ma ton the same, e na yari e yibay so no, e se sanye be na abem. Ebrone de, e se sanye be a me mu, e fri se, samre yi, fo frane be ba, e ti dada na o hono, ni buono be peja ka kredi, e ti se sanye be a me mu, tema yari e ni sha se na ye tu maketi ni mono, sa tam ni e tono, e be se anu tu million, tu hundred, tu hundred and, Button, Say, I buy a call lockdown. He nipper bedroom, a bedigger. The pastor said, The nipper bedroom to suffer. The nipper near bark, 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 bark. Mujano send the city of Halbena. A janet, as he said, Dina cra. He said, I'm tired, dear cra. If you are not a pair better than I, a grandma talk, no long cutting. And yet, it's here, sir. The next. Now, me dey meet you when you say, "Come on, you have to enjoy the money." I really shall see a car see a quote next year. I'm on for to a to no ma pa. A bro go na ya to ma ni sign. And inti me me feel say no ma umo no ma ufi me sign ma di enjoy me. And inti no mo ma market me. So now we know there is a slight increase in the price of maize on the market. We're still here at the Agubulushi market. We're going to go uh, talk to traders of plantain and see if the situation is same. Hello, mommy. You're more cover. Yeah, yeah. You're more cover. But you're not to see you a costro and not say a buffer. Now, but you're not going to be a buffer. But you're not going to be a season. 
and your covenant in our canoe, a season, a do sabre, May, June, July, but any boy had in the bin hole. And then a born idea, a noma, no boy had in Susan, as I said, but he said, a do sabre, and a bin hole. If you know, stretch a buonimo, a sabre, you know, a friend's a bruno. Motor on the same, and I said, Binu also a motor. But they are what? But they are what? It drew in the air, Cassia, Crabia, twenty Ghana, fifteen, twenty five. And then so your fifty Ghana, sixty Ghana, seventy Ghana, crowd, it drew back. Season Money covenant in a good gun to say a bit so these are the reasons the market women have ascribed uh, to the slight increase in the prices of their produce. Uh, let's go to Commodity Price Survey Service Institution is Soko Ghana, who have done some research on the prices or prices of commodities in the markets within this period. Analysis by Isoko, which surveyed seven markets across Ghana, showed that the price of a 91 kilogram of cassava recorded the highest increase of 28.84% to record 124 cities in April this year compared to the previous month. This was followed by tomato and medium size of the Puna variety of yam. A 72 kilogram crate and 100 tubers of tomato and yam sold for 826 and 815 cities respectively. Maize followed with its price increasing by 18.11% to record 164 cities for a 100 kilogram bag. Content manager for Isoko, Francis Dansu Ej, explained the factors accounting for the rise in prices for the period. If there is too much rain, it spoils the cassava. And so you realize that um, within the period, in, that is April, we didn't have a lot of um, range to let them uproot and then sell. And we should also bear in mind that for the period in which we are in, some markets are also regulating how traders ply or how consumers go into the market and traders ply their trade within the market. On the projections for the month of May, Isoko says it expects prices to rise and thus Francis Danso AJ largely attributes to the possible impact of the restricted movement on markets. We've come to the office of the Accra Union Sellers and Importers Association and we are fortunate to have the organizer of the association here. We're going to do a comparison of the price of onion on the market see if there has been an increase or a decrease as you as, as you can see you can see that the goods are in scarce due to the closure of the border and you can see as for now before even the corona we said one bag at 450 and now you can see that there's a low percentage and now we are selling at 250 220 so so the price has decreased and there's no patronage. Usually what we have come to see is that when there's scarcity, uh, prices go up. up yeah. But now you're telling us that you have reduced your prices. Why? Uh, usually, that's within last week, there's an abandonment of the goods. It's just within these three days that there's a, a scarcity of the goods. So for like today, last I'm talking about, like today like this, you have only three cars and the price has gone up small. Because today we are selling like 280. Uh, today at least 280. How much were you selling last week? Last week we were selling 220, 200. You see, so you can see there's an increase small to the supply. So if making losses. Yes, yes, that's what I mean. Like. There's a low patronage, and due to the border culture, we are making loss. We are at loss. The young sellers are lamenting the impact of the coronavirus pandemic on their business. And so we're going to speak to the Concoma Yam Producers and the Marketers Society to find out exactly how COVID-19 is impacting uh, the sale of yam. Look at our yams. 
getting rotten. It is getting rotten. It's now worse. We can't even sell. Look at these 500 tubers of here. One, two, three, four, five. We counted them since in the morning. Nobody has even bought one. So really, it has affected us more. Our cars are parked outside. We don't even get somewhere to be parked. The yams are rotten. In fact, it really affects we, the yam sellers, the farmer, the yam producers, personally. Mm -hmm. A big size of tuna. A big size. At the market, how much? And oh. before Corona, how much? Oh, before Corona, a big size of tuna can give you maybe 15 cities, 10 cities, or somewhere. But this time, you can't get it like that. It is rotten. So how much is this one? Oh, at least 10 cities. You can't get above 10 cities. It is rotten. You will not allow your yams to keep them at least three or four days for it to rot. So when the buyers come, any price they give you, you release it up and take the little that you have. So now you are reducing the prices yes, to be able to pay. Yes, We are reducing the prices because uh, farm, uh, yam producers, their, their, their goods are, sell, are sold uh, seasonally. If you don't sell it at that time, it will get rotten. Well, it's pretty obvious that uh, for dealers or producers of yam, uh, they have really been impacted by the outbreak of uh, Corona, as we just heard. Oh, uh, let's go to the Ministry for Food and Agriculture and see what the make of the various issues raised here by the various traders at the market. For us, we think as a ministry, uh, our concern, first concern is whether food will be available to Ghanaians. And that was um, fears that were expressed during the heat of the lockdown. And the minister was categorical in telling Ghanaians that there was no need for uh, panic buying because food will continue to be available. Of course, there are a lot of things that determine prices of food items. You and I know transportation costs and all that go into it. But we, have, we were from the field last week, and what we realized was that we, were, we visited the food basket, the, the four food basket in the southern region. We're talking about Bono East, Bono region, Ashanti, and Eastern region. And generally, we were very confident about what we saw. And for us, the pain the, 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 the concern is how to give the market or how to manage the surpluses that are on the field. Yes. Obviously, the food prices are based on a number of factors, including times and seasons. Yes. How do we hope to ensure price stability even during off-season of food food? We, we have to also look at a lot of factors because the farmer also has to get money because everybody has a season that's to, to cash in whatever product irrespective of whether it is food or not, some certain products have their seasons. And so we must also bear in mind that the farmer must not run at a loss. What is the assurance, one, to the farmer against post-harvest losses, two, to the market woman of a, well, let's say a substantial profit margin, and then three, to the consumer of affordable prices of food produce on the market. Okay, so you know, my brother, you know Ghana is, um, we are operating a liberal economy. And so um, somebody will prefer to buy from Malata, Agwagulushi. Others will want to go to far end to buy. Prices will vary. But uh, as a ministry, we, we also believe in the demand and supply. And that's how come certain food items that are under the planty for food and jobs, like maize, like sogum, so you've been, when you look at the price, you realize that for the past three years, it has been very stable. So we are looking at that. But the uh, most important thing is that um, we don't want to compete with the, with the private sector as a government. But what we do is that even when we are supporting farmers to increase their productivity in terms of uh, uh, supply of input and all that, we still leave the choice to the farmer that if he has a way to negotiate, he has the negotiation power to, to purchase, to, to sell his produce. He's at liberty. Isal Hassan is press secretary to the Minister for Food and Agriculture. And there you have it, assurances uh, as to relative stability of prices of food products or food produce on our market. My name is Nana Tufo reporting for City News.
You're still watching the City Newsroom here on City TV. Still to come, low patronage hits malls, pushing sales of goods and services down. We'll bring you details of that story and more. Please stay with us. with exciting new features. Want to go social? Upload a cool image to add a personal feel to your account. Payments are even more seamless with an enhanced process. Mark some accounts as favorites so they are super easy to access. Even cooler, view payment due dates and check remaining balances for your favorite accounts. Want to repeat a payment? Do that right from the History tab. Have all your money in one place with a sleek look and feel. Bank Direct has had an awesome makeover. You can now send money instantly to 22 banks and counting. Express Pay. Payment simplified. extra minutes and extra unlimited calls not just that even our extra data doesn't expire so if you love, simply dial star 111 hash to bundle now airtel to go life is simple doubt that the coronavirus pandemic has had dire consequences on Ghana's economy. Now, almost every sector has been affected. Prior to COVID-19, shopping malls were highly patronized by Ghanaians, but the story has changed. Today on the City Newsroom, I am here at the Accra Mall, one of the biggest shopping centers in Accra, to assess how the pandemic has affected business. My name is Fremer Dunyame. So we are still here at the Accra Mall observing how people are shopping and how shop owners are also finding their businesses. Now this area is in front of the ShopRite supermarket and you can see, um, okay, so the inscription on it is observed. And I'm going to find out from the workers inside how they are coping. Hello, welcome. You, you're also welcome to our show. Thank you very much. How is business? In fact, it's not going on well at all. Not at all. Right. So, before coronavirus, how was business? And this time, how is it going? Oh, when I compare before and after us. This time it's very bad. There is a huge difference in markets. They don't patronize nowadays at all. I think what people are buying is food, and then yeah, that's what I, I, I'll say. Then our stores are closed and shoes, so they are not patronizing at all. Right. So on a, a day, how many people enter here to buy stuff? At first, we will have like like many people but for now i'll say like 10 people will enter the shop a day and let's say two or three of them will buy in fact the market is very bad so 
moving on, if coronavirus continue for maybe another month or two months, what is going to happen to your job? <laughs> we the workers, we are even <laughs> we are praying that God should see us through, else we are going to lose our jobs. Mm -hmm. Because when the worker, the owner of the shop is not getting anything out from the shop, how will the person pay you? So this is still City Newsroom on City TV. That is what Moti um, is saying. The shop really is begging for some help. People just need to come and buy because the pandemic is really affecting them. So I'm going to still move around and find out how other shops are also doing. So this is Maiden Home Decor. So let's get inside and see what is happening. Wow, beautiful decor, but are people buying? Let me talk to this gentleman. Hello, welcome to City Newsroom. Thank you. Your name is? Hamidu. Hamidu, how was business? Oh, no, the business is very bad. Mm. Yeah. Why, why, why do you think business is bad? Because of the coronavirus, now people are not becoming the more inside again. Mm. But before they, yeah. yeah. So are you worried about people not patronizing? Because if people are not coming, your job is at stake. Yeah, because people are not becoming by this for it. Up to we will not get our sales too, mm -hmm. and the uh, owner of the company who cannot pay us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. so but have you been receiving your salary so far? Yeah, they pay us last year, the last month, they pay us the full mm -hmm. payment. Right, so the original Accra Mall setup has um, a lot of mini setups, mini outlets, you know, selling makeup, keychains, and a whole lot of others in this um, corridor. But you realize that due to the pandemic, the whole area has been cleared. Now, this was a stand, you know, for Samsung. So they sold um, some phones and um, Samsung products here. You can also tell that. Um, the day cafe is just over there and it is also closed. Um, so if you are someone who patronizes this particular shop, you realize that it is closed. And this is all done to ensure that there's no congestion at the walkways in the mall. So let's see what we have here that is also covered. And um, so this is a makeup stand. And okay, so it says that stay safe, attention, dear cherished customers. In light of the coronavirus outbreak, our kiosk is closed temporarily until further notice. Kindly channel all purchases through our online shop. So, this is the situation right now. And so, if you are coming to the Accra Mall to do any kind of shopping, you may want to find out if your shop or the area that you are visiting is indeed open because most of the people especially in the walkways have been cleared just to make way for social distancing and to avoid any kind of congestion so the Accra mall also hosts one of the biggest cinemas in Accra so for those of us who are movie lovers let's go upstairs and check if we'll be lucky Right, so we are here um, at the Silver Bed Cinemas at the Accra Mall. Oh, so it looks closed already because there is a barrier here. And by all indications, hi. Hi, you work here? Yes, we sound the security officer here. Oh, you're the security officer. Is the cinema open? No. Since when has it been closed? Um, for the past two months. For the past two months? So for March and April? Yes, please. Okay. No movies have been shown here? Yeah, because of the social gathering, no more than 25 people. Okay. Yeah, so we closed down everything at, I think, 16th of March. Okay. Yeah. So how have you been paid? Uh, <laughs> that one depends on my boss. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But did you get your salary in April? Yes, please. Okay. Then you are cool. <laughs> Yeah. So no one comes here at all? Yeah. Okay. So if you are a movie lover, I'm sorry, but um, the cinema is closed. You cannot come in anytime soon. Well, not until the ban on public gathering is lifted. So this is the situation right now at the Accra Mall, um, Silver Bed Cinemas. So we're still here at the Accra Mall and um, with a ban on public gathering. Let's find out from Governor how business is. Hello. 
Hi, how are you? Welcome to the city newsroom. Welcome. All right. How much is this suit? 1,400 cities. For the whole set? For just the jackets and the trousers. Say again. The jackets and the trousers. It's thousand four hundred cities. Well, so just this is thousand four hundred cities. All right. So are people buying your stuff, especially now coronavirus? Uh, they do before, but because of the pandemic, the customers are really, really reduced because of the pandemic. Yeah. So, so how many people walk into your shop a day buying stuff? They used to come a lot, but this time already, because of the situation, they don't come because of the because the people in the mall. They are fear maybe when they come around. They might be get affected or stuff because they don't know who is affected and the person is you know more so they don't want to come at all so okay. it has been we, we don't have much customers coming now we don't we don't yeah. so how much have you sold today uh today the market has been down a bit so we haven't really made a, a match now yeah. all right good luck you too, Adam. Yeah. So this is Grovener. They sell everything you can see here. Suits, shirts, bow ties, shoes and all. Now it is past 3.30 p.m. But Gideon tells me that business is that bad. Not even a single sale has been made today. This is what coronavirus has brought to mankind. Well, so for food lovers, there is a bit of luck because restaurants opened i'm here at the food court at the accra mall and you can just see um just a few shops opened a few restaurants open majority of them are still closed now with even those who are open you just see just a few people um seated around under normal circumstance you see this area very packed sometimes people come all the way to this space just to have their meals but as you can see the place is quite empty with just a few people sitting around to have their meals this is the city news room on city tv so you've heard the shop owners you've also heard from the shoppers business is not as it used to be and um, you also have seen the safety measures that have been put in place by management of the facility i'm currently here in the office of the center manager denise asari to talk to her about how business is like how they are treating their tenants any interventions how safe um, shoppers are also so um how is business in terms of patronage how would you describe it um clearly we're not in normal times um it's we're under a lot of um, pressure obviously the covid 19 being a global pandemic has um been quite hard on us and especially for shopping centers um, and and the businesses that are within shopping centers um, it's become quite tough and as management it's uh, something that's unexpected so you always feel like you're running a race trying to catch up with all the updates that come along with the pandemic I mean clearly we had practically um, very very low patronage during the lockdown despite the fact that we were um, opened um, for essential services we did experience um, a decline in in our foot traffic um, it's slowly picking itself up post the lockdown but obviously um, it hasn't proved to be the same given that we've had um, the Easter holiday celebration and now we're during the Ramadan you don't see the same consumer behavior trends um, within the shopping mall and um, how are you dealing with tenants you know there's been issues of um, calls on landlords being a bit taking it easy on tenants so how do you deal with your tenants obviously it's a situation that does affect um, the tenants and obviously the landlords are the same um, we have extended our um, extreme support to our tenants and we are in the process of actually communicating our position in regards to um, what what we are going to offer them um, it's you know we, we want to support the businesses that are within our shopping mall and we don't want to want them to collapse so we'll do everything that we can to ensure that we sustain the businesses that are in the, the mall. Right, so do you want to share some of the interventions that you're putting in place to help them? Um, obviously there are some rental relief um, discussions that we are um, having with our tenants. Not everything has been finalised, but it's something that we are definitely um, discussing with all our tenants, yes. 
The leadership of the Greater Accra Markets Association is asking all market women and traders to strictly adhere to the directive on the wearing of face masks. The group made the call after the Coastal Development Authority presented a total of 70,000 face masks and sanitizers to its members and fisher folk in the Greater Accra region. There is more in the following report. The president of the Greater Accra Markets Association, Masina Afrowa Nijan, stressed on the need for all persons in the market space to wear face masks. According to her, educating the traders on the move is a step in the right direction as government devices means to curb the spread of coronavirus. And we are going to educate our market women. They should put it on, but not put it around their necks. They should remove it only when they want to eat or drink water. They should use water, pipe water, flowing pipe water, to wash their hands with soap. They should use the sanitizer to clean their hands, especially after touching money, after money changing hands, because it's very, very serious. And I hope with continuous education, everything will be okay. In fact, it's not easy to introduce something for the first time. The Chief Executive Officer of the Coastal Development Authority, Jerry Ahmed Shaib, said similar gestures of presenting face masks will be done in all six regions under his watch. He said the authority will embark on an education exercise on the need to wear face masks at all times. We are replicating this in all the six regions within the coastal development zone. So we are going to, from here, from Greater Accra, we'll go to the central region. You know, Kaswa is one of the places suffering from the spread. From the uh, central region, we'll go to the western region. From the western region, we'll go to the water region. Then we'll go to the and western north. And in all of these regions, we are looking at about 109 constituencies. So our calculation is that if every constituency is going to benefit from at least 2,000 of the masks, then we should be doing about uh, 218,000 of the masks. So we are rounding up to 220,000 of the masks. The Greater Accra Regional Minister, Ishmael Ashite, who was at the presentation ceremony, reiterated the Regional Coordinating Council's directives on the wearing of face masks in the region. The way forward is that we want to protect lives. And Ghanaians must be ready to protect themselves and others. So wearing of masks, I think it's far better than somebody seeing you lying dead and then you are going, sometimes in the way to bury you becomes a problem. Let us all try to do that. And I think you, the, uh, the press, you have a lot of work to do by educating them. Some of them, I, I, I know, don't really understand what we are doing. And when so we talk to them, sometimes in the languages that they will understand, we will be having some problems. For his part, Director of Operations at the Accra Regional Police Command, ACP Kwesi Ofori, indicated that the police is poised to enforce the directives outlined. It is a pandemic that is attacking everybody. And for us, we have been lucky. That situation has not gone bad due to prudent policy decisions initiated by government and the people of Ghana. But we should not allow those who feel they are not prepared, you know, to sacrifice for the state, to assist in ensuring good health and public security. We're going to clamp down on them seriously, arrest them, and put them before court. You are still watching the City Newsroom on City TV. Still ahead in the bulletin, stigmatization hindering efforts by health workers in the Ashanti region in a fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. We have details coming up shortly. Do stay. Just a whiskey, but I'm more than that. 
I'm a blend. Born from the finest single malts and grains, blended to be smooth with a warm amber glow. Admired by men and women all over the world. I'm not one of these things. I'm all of these things. Mellow, rich and generous. Because blended is better in life and in scotch. Shivas. Blended Scotch Whiskey. Drink responsibly, not for sale to persons under 18 years of age, not recommended for pregnant women. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Imagine if you can get all the understanding on some of the difficult subjects you struggle with in school. As a student, do you feel dissatisfied with how hard it is to figure out a subject you're learning? Or as a parent or guardian, do you worry that your child is struggling to understand some of the subjects in school? Well, now you don't need to sign up for extra lessons or tutors. Simply tune in to Class Act, Mondays to Thursdays at 5.30 p.m. on City TV. Class Act is a show that seeks to enable senior high school students gain a much better understanding of what they learn in school. All you need is a TV, a chair, your notebook, and your pen. Get clarity on subjects such as maths, English, IT, and science. Class Act airs every Monday to Thursday at 5.30 p.m. on City TV, on DSTV Channel 363, and Go TV Channel 182. Don't forget your pens, pencils, and your notebooks and tune in to Class Act only on City TV. Hello again. Now, as part of measures to enhance testing of COVID-19 samples in the Ashanti region, the Health Directorate says it will decentralize laboratories to complement the efforts by one of Ghana's recognized coronavirus testing centers, the Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research, KCCR. The Ashanti region has recorded 163 confirmed cases with five deaths. Ashanti Regional Director of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Emmanuel Tinkran, briefed journalists in Kumasi from where City News' Ashanti Regional Correspondent, Hafiz Tijani, reports. The Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research, KCCR, has played a key role in testing samples of suspected cases of coronavirus in the Ashanti region. The center has so far tested 41,981 samples taken from routine surveillance, community screening, and travelers who were suspected to be carrying the virus. Ashanti Regional Director of the Ghana Health Service during a briefing in Kumasi said decentralizing testing centers will ease pressure on the KCCR. It's our plan to decentralize the labs. So apart from Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research, we are also working with Ghana Health Service to set up at least two labs in addition to KCCR. One will be based in our public health reference lab in Kumasi South. And then we are also talking to Kofanochi to see whether we can use their lab. There are other facilities that is in Kumasi that we can put in shape. Example is the Hope Exchange uh, Hospital. They have a lab, and all these labs, uh, we believe that with the support of KCCR, we can now decentralize and get more laboratories so that the testing will go very fast. Because so far, that has been the major bottleneck as far as our effort to combat the COVID is concerned. 17 out of the 43 districts in the Ashanti region have recorded COVID-19 cases. 56% of the cases are males and 44% females. Obwasi leads with 47 confirmed cases. What we know is that the areas that have become hot spots are still the hot water spots. Let's, for instance, take Obuasi as an example. Obuasi was the first to report a case in the Ashanti region, and as at now, they are leading as far as the number of cases are concerned. Young people always, and especially male, always want to take risks. How many old people do you see in town? How many old people? You see, when you are getting to a certain age, then your risk perception change. 
And when you go to town and you see what is going on, no, you don't have to dispute it. Because I can, within, even without any test, tell you that if people are going to get infected, then it's the young men. Some of them are still playing football now. We've had a number, some of them draft, and anytime you go around, you see what is happening. Dr. Tinkran says the issue of stigmatization is hindering efforts by health workers to fight the pandemic. But one thing that we want you to do for us to, uh, is to address the issue of stigma and discrimination, which so far has been the major bottleneck as far as our fight against COVID-19 in this country is concerned. People who go through the protocol and then are discharged, when they go home, they are usually faced with challenges. Even when we are looking for isolation center, we are, we are being challenged in the sense that a lot of people don't understand what we are doing. So uh, we will have to communicate the risk so that people will appreciate why there's a need for you to be isolated, why there's that need for you to be kept for 14 days, and after that we test you. If the community don't understand what we are doing, then they only resist what we are doing, and it makes our work very difficult. Anytime you are going to pick a case, there's always a fight. And some of them do not understand, and they resort to social media to discredit what we are doing. And this is where we part company. You've been watching the City Newsroom on City TV. Remember, our website, citynewsroom.com, has more stories. Subscribe to CityTube on YouTube for more exclusive video content from City TV. Download the City Newsroom app from the Google Play Store and keep updated on the go. You can always watch City TV on DSTV channel 363 and Go TV channel 182. My name is Freeme Dunyame. My name is Michael Lobodu. Thank you for watching. As always, please stay safe.